Hello, hello, hello. Uh, checking in with Axiom's End, uh, a 2020 alternative science, alternative history science fiction novel set in 2007, where um, aliens have arrived and there's a cover up by the US government. Um, our heroine, uh, Cora. Uh, Sabino, Cora Sabino, is a college dropout living with her mother, who's just gotten her a really crappy temp job doing data entry or something equivalent to that. Uh, probably not data entry. Maybe in 2007 it could still be data entry uh, at a, you know, soulless corporation. Um, the complicating factor is, is that her father, Niels Ortega, is uh sort of a um a wikileaks um julian assange kind of character who has um is 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 leaking government secrets about the uh, cover-up of uh, alien contact and indeed has released some damning damning stuff uh just as uh, a meteorite strike has happened and as we open this novel, her Cora is definitely that down in the luck heroine. She's, I guess, she's flunked out of, or, or somehow out of out of her linguistics jo linguistics um, uh, position at uh, as a student as, as a linguistic student at a uh, top top college, uh, and yeah, she her car bus is is dead in the first bit here the mother the uh, money that her mother l uh, uh, lent her for it she spent on tickets to a concert where she can kind of be just kind of lost in the music and not have to be under what's basically super scrutiny um um lindsay ellis is no stranger as a uh youtuber uh in the great Great wars of 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 f f f I don't know what the hell they're called now, flame wars, culture wars, wars against women online, uh, all that stuff. As you know, just the freaking toxicity infuses her her character Cora with the whole thing of everyone. Um, you know, the government is seems to be tracking them. Uh, Nils has got a whole bunch of basically geek, fat, super testosterone fanboys who whirl on her when she gives an interview at some point, trying to be diplomatic, but basically saying, yeah, my father did nothing for us, left us completely in the lurch, fucked us over, you know, nothing for him. Which is like, why do you hate your father so much? What has the government gotten to you? Kind of, blah, 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 blah. kind of that kind of crazy stuff, which she actually finds with a uh, co-worker at the Solus Corporation on this really shitty day is basically parrots, parrots to her. Um, and he's actually today has on, on to compound today. She gets to work and he, this co-worker uh, informs her that he's just re released his, a new kind of manifesto thing. And it's basically, I, you know, I'm doing this for my children and I hope someday they will join me. And it's just like, fuck, fuck. So she's getting really triggered by that. And then a meteorite, a second meteor comes whizzing by, shatters all the glass in the glass tower that she's in and strikes generally in the same position same place as the as the last meteorite strike which thinking about the odds and the things like that that's like statistically fucking impossible so something's going on she decides fuck it and goes home you know the whole side of the building has all the glass is shattered she thinks okay everyone's gonna go home she goes home, finds her um, her aunt there playing playing a game, uh, just sort of let herself in, freaks her out, kind of really startles her. Um, you know, a little bit of a little 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 chef's kiss taste of maybe like you know violation of boundaries that's going to be happening as we go along. Um, and it's yes, it's her aunt 
who is a former government employee herself, but once her her brother became uh, public enemy number one, that kind of fucked her career. Uh, and yeah, she's gotten pushed out of everything uh, and has a very kind of strange kind of fat, flat aff affect, aff affect. Um, does go, oh shit, some guys were tailing, tailing, um, them to work, really tailing them in a really aggressively, we're tailing you kind of way on the way. And apparently they've been tailing your mother like that for the last while. Um, mother arrives royally pissed off at her because yes, the soulless corporation was pissed off that one of their employees temp would actually leave work with just a minor inconvenience, all like, you know, meteorite strike all the windows, people completely freaking out. It's like, nope, she got fired, and they also are terminating their contract with the temp agency that her mother works at and that she recommended her daughter for the job. <sighs> and now they're going to have a discussion with her, so she may get fired as well. And um, into this comes um, her little Moppet sister, Butternut Olive, um, and her brother, shitty little sh shitty brother who seems to be a uh niels ortega carbon copy who's looks like he's going to be as emotionally manipulative and asshole as her as his father growing up um and they're in the midst of a bit of a meltdown and a screaming match at that point when uh cia agent Saul arrives Saul something i can't remember who basically kind of gives leans on them and says, like, we expect you not to actually have any contact with, with media. It's like, we fucking don't want any. It's like, so you've had no contact with them? It's like, none. None. Which we learn in the next scene. Uh, Cora's lying because he indeed did send, him a, send her a letter. Um, she... <laughs> and it's a letter where she's like, you know, I hope you'll join me one day. It is, I, like, I hope you'll understand what I did and why I did it. I hope you'll understand me and I hope you'll join me one day and she actually writes a letter and goes out in the rain and drops it in their local mailbox which is like you just had a cia guy lean, lean on you and they're obviously and you had your 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 um your aunt who's like you know obviously government under un, was government -y thing give you a burner phone but you're going to use the mail and the mailbox right outside of where you live and put it in. And indeed, when she drops it in, there's a flash as of someone taking a picture of her doing a dumbass thing. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, but you know, these are freak. This is a freaked out protagonist who maybe isn't just thinking clearly, but it's like, wow, wow. That's so monumentally dumb, but people do monumentally dumb things. And, you know, Cora's, not really been shown so far as uh, the most stable or um, making the best lifestyle choices, you know, spending the money uh, on the concert tickets versus on, on, on getting the car fixed, you know, various things. Uh, you know, she flunked out of school and she's like lost her scholarship. Apparently it's like uh, all's, all's not great stuff. So this is definitely written in a fairly utilitarian manner quite clear though um you know it's not like great prose stylist it's someone who's telling a genre story uh and try to tell it efficiently so we, we will see how it goes i like that cora's definitely got a lot of bumps in her um yeah yeah we'll see how it goes from there uh it's an audiobook so um the father's Father's words are uh, read by a male narrator, while a female narrator is doing everything that's basically, I think it's all Cora. It's interesting that it's taking place in 2007 in the Bush years, an alternate Bush time, which is an interesting thing to have. I wonder what's the purpose of setting it back then, or did is that when Lindsay and Ellis started the book, so that's when her alternate timeline just is or is it used because she knows that gonna know about that his recent history 
in a way that could make it uh, useful for uh, writing about it. Like, you know, I know about the George Bush administration, kind of that sort of stuff. So yeah, that's Axiom's end so far. It's okay. More videos later.